The Toronto Raptors are about to make another blockbuster trade. Now, they just made a blockbuster franchise-altering trade about a couple days ago when they sent OG Ananobi and Malachi Flynn and Precious Achua to the New York Knicks in exchange for RJ Barrett and Emmanuel Quickly. Now, after that deal, everyone wondered what was going to happen to Pascal Siakam. And people wondered, would he be extended now that the OG issue had been solved? Well, there were reports right after from many reputable sources that Pascal Siakam would be still on the trade market. And as of today, we have seen that there are a couple new suitors that have entered the race for Pascal Siakam. However, it should be said, the Pascal Siakam trade scenario is complicated and... Yeah, let's get right into it here. The Pascal Siakam trade has a bit of a problem to it. My name is Fuad Sullivan from Courtside Digest, and let's hop right into it. So yes, Pascal Siakam does not want to sign a, will not sign in a, con, a contract if he's traded. He's likely to go into unrestricted free agency to whatever team go he goes to. So that does put a bit of a fly in the ointment for teams that like the Indiana Pacers, like the Atlanta Hawks who are not very good right now, but see Pascal as a secondary piece that can make them very good in the very near future, maybe next season. But when you talk about those teams right now, they can't go out and risk all those assets to pick up Pascal Siakam and then have him leave in free agency. As you can see, Mark Stein in this article explains it very well. Any team that acquires Pascal will be only be eligible to offer him a two-year extension And he would prefer to be an unrestricted free agent in 2024, meaning that whoever trades for him is going to have to think they're ready to win right now because it's going to be more of a risk and as such going to temper the return for Pascal Siakam. So where that brings us next is the new suitors for Pascal Siakam. And they kind of fit into that billing. Two teams that have superstars and could make big threes, but and two teams that could see themselves as one piece away from NBA championship contention. So let's get into the first team. The Dallas Mavericks are interested in Pascal Siakam. Now, this should not come as much of a surprise because the Dallas Mavericks are interested in everybody. Like ever since Dirk Nowitzki was playing for the team, Mark Cuban has been constantly fi- trying to find ways to bring in a new superstar or try to make a super team way back when they wanted to get Dwight Howard and Chris Paul to pair with Dirk Nowitzki. And they did that last trade deadline when they acquired Kyrie Irving, a a superstar in his own right, but a very distressed asset because of the off-court baggage. And it's worked out for them pretty well so far. Now, what they have now is assets and a guy who, again, like Kyrie Irving, is not under contract. They're going to have to sign him in the offseason. But The way they've operated is trade first, ask questions last. And yeah, like look at, I mean, if you look at the fit, it would be a perfect fitting big three for the Dallas Mavericks. Like we talk about big threes, like the, like the Phoenix Suns, where they all have the same skill set. Some of them better than others, but they all need this, need the ball in their hands. And they all kind of do relatively the same thing. A big three of Kyrie Irving, Luka Doncic and Pascal Siakam is much much more dynamic. A guy like Kyrie is used to playing off ball when playing with LeBron James and also playing with the Brooklyn Nets. And, you know, on the court, it was really, really good. He's an amazing shooter. Luka Doncic, of course, is the head of the snake. Everything runs through him. He's going to have the ball all the time. Now, when you throw Pascal Siakam in here, Siakam becomes an amazing role man, an unbelievable cutter. And I think his spot-up shooting would be so much more improved with all the attention on these two offensive superstars, I can see a move happening. Now, the Dallas Mavericks, there are reports that they would want to trade Josh Green and Tim Hardaway Jr. in a first. Now, that is not going to cut it. And knowing Masai Ujiri and how he really, really overvalues his players, they're more likely to ask for Luka Doncic in exchange for Pascal Siakam than to accept that trade, meaning that trade will not be accepted. The only acceptable move would be for this man, Derek Lively II. He's kind of a blue chip prospect for the Mavericks, only 19 years old. 
And at this young age, is a very effective center. Like, he's averaging pretty good numbers. He's huge. And he's only going to get better. He fits with the timeline of Scotty Barnes, now RJ Barrett, Emmanuel Quickly. Like, he would be a very young piece on that team. And it wouldn't be a clean fit, of course. Like, again, Jakob Pertl is still there. But this would be a move geared towards building for the future. In that deal, you'd want to get Jaden Hardy, a guy that's a buy-low candidate, a guy who's been a very explosive scorer in the past. And Omax Prosper, a rookie who hasn't seen the court much, but is a forward prospect, a 6'8 defensive forward, a Masai Ujiri special. And there you'd have it. I think that would be a very fair deal. But if they don't get Derek Lively in that deal, it would be a disaster. You cannot, even if, I'd rather, the, I mean, I think the Raptors would rather just extend Pascal Siakam than trade him for nothing. In, in a case of like a Vince Carter type trade from 20 years ago, I truly believe they would feel more comfortable extending him if they did not get a deal like a Derek Lively. Now let's talk about the Memphis Grizzlies. Now this one is even more intriguing because first of all, the Memphis Grizzlies have one of the most unique situations I've seen in a very, very long time. The Grizzlies, you know, they were seen as a contender, but they started off 5-19 and because of one John Morant getting himself suspended in the offseason, and now he's he's back in the lineup. But, you know, and they won the first couple games with him back in the lineup. He looked amazing in his return. But he's still, it, it's still not good. Like, he, they just lost three straight. They're still mid. Like, they're still missing a lot of pieces. And I think that's where they might start to get a little bit desperate and think, hey, you know, we want to get into the play. And we want to salvage this season that's been pretty much lost because of John Morant's actions. There's a number of ways they can approach it. Like, one way is the Raptors can go out and get a guy like Jaron Jackson Jr. in exchange with Pascal Siak. Now, Jaron Jackson is less is a lesser player than Pascal Siak, but is younger, under team control, and fits a skill set more suited to Scotty Barnes, where he's a spot-up shooter, he's a, he's a rim protector, and he, can, he doesn't need the ball in his hands to be effective. I don't think he, like Jaron Jackson and Scotty Barnes would not get in each other's way. I think they would complement each other extremely well. And for the Grizzlies side, he's not the greatest fit with Morant and Bain because he's he can't rebound and he's not a very physical player. They need somebody who can rebound and Siakam is a better rebounder than Jaron Jackson. If they get Siakam, they'd also have to get another big man in that deal uh, for a Jaron Jackson deal. But I think it would work out perfectly for both teams if that deal was made because the Grizzlies would end up with a big three of Morant, Bain, and Siakam. And they'd have a lot of other young pieces and a lot of contracts to play with to get guys around them. They need a big rim protector. Maybe they could find a way to send Pascal and Jakob Pertl and make a really big deal. I'm not sure if the money would work there, but you know, if they get Siakam in the fold for Jaron Jackson get a big man like an Andre Drummond, they would be effective. I think they could make a, pl- a run to the play-in tournament. And next season, they'd be a contender. They'd be top of the Western Conference if they could sign Siakam to an extension. I mean, Morant, Bain, and Siakam, that's a very complimentary big three, much like we talked about with the Dallas Mavericks. They all would work in perfect harmony. Another route, though, that we could go with is not Jaron Jackson. I mean, Jaron Jackson would be the most likely because... Misai Ujiri does not like draft picks much. He wants to get young, established talent. That would be a deal similar to what we saw with OG Ananobi for Barrett and Emmanuel quickly. Now, another route they can go is they can go and get draft picks from the Memphis Grizzlies. Now, they can go and get this year's draft pick, which right now is sixth overall. The Raptors is seventh overall going to the Spurs. Not good. But they can go out and get that pick. Obviously, the pick would improve, or sorry, would get worse, rather. It would go down towards probably the late lottery. And you can get maybe three first-round picks in the future as well. You package up Steven Adams, Brandon Clark, uh, Luke Kennard, and they'd have a big four in Memphis. And that would be probably more interesting to the Memphis Grizzlies because they'd have a core four that could win them a championship if they put the right guys around them. John Morant stays you know, stays in good behavior, that team could win it all and they'd be really, really good next season. The Raptors would get a pick likely in the lottery because they might miss the plan and they'd also get more picks in the future. But what do you guys think? 
Will Pascal Siakam actually be traded by the Raptors? Can they get a good return? Are Dallas and or Memphis a good fit? Do you think he might go to the other teams like the Hawks, the Pacers, the Kings, the, de- the teams that were, were who have been reported for many, many months? Let me know in the comments. My name is Fuad Suleiman. Thank you so much for watching on Courtside Digest. Hit like if you like this video. Subscribe. Tell everyone you know Courtside Digest comes with all the latest and greatest in the NBA. Thank you very much and peace.